this first video is about the statement of financial position, uh, previously known as the balance sheet, the proper name, and it's also very logical to call it the statement of financial position. And the balance sheet meant a lot to it. The term balance sheet meant a lot to accountants, but not to anyone else. And there's much more important things about the balance sheet than that it balanced. And so the statement of financial position gives the user a snapshot of the current uh, position, the current status of things at the organization. And we're using for our class purposes of Exhibit 17.17a, .17 okay, uh, the Combined Financial Statements Global, okay. Um, to me, this is the most comprehensive example of the financial statements in the accounting manual. I've never thought much about including the operating financial statements, but that's another presentation. Right now, we're talking about the Combined Financial Statements Global. And the proper name for the Statement of Financial Position is the name Statement of Financial Position. Uh, the word combined is, uh, is stuck here. Uh, to help us understand that it is combining the operating fund and the plan fund together. So you could call it the combined if you want, but for sure you need to call it the statement of financial position. Uh, starting off is the date on the statement of financial position. Uh, it includes a, a static date, meaning a point in time. So in this case, it would be the 31st of December of 2001 and 2000. Uh, it doesn't matter, like we'll talk about many times, is, is these are just sample financial statements and it's important to know that there's lots of flexibility in, in the regional differences as far as the financial statements. Well, maybe we'll mention it here. All through the, uh, the all through the accounting manual are words about help us understand things. Okay, the words are the rules. The, the example financial statements are exa just examples to help us have something to sort of put the rules, to put a little flesh onto the rules. But the rules are the rules over in the words. The words say, for example, that the definition of cash and cash equivalents. They will say uh, accounts receivable and uh, net. For example, they'll say you, you, can, you must disclose so and so about accounts receivable. That would mean, this is slightly hard to get your head around sometime, but the rules say such and such must be disclosed. The way you disclose it, it, there's a lot of flexibility, meaning a disclosure could include something that is put on the face of the financial statements of the main statements, or it could be something that is done down in the notes. Either case, they're disclosed. And so disclosure, the rules specify what must be somewhere in the financial statements. Okay, It doesn't necessarily tell you exactly how to do it. And so in the example financial statements, these are the words that made the most sense when the examples were being made up for the region of the person who was making up the financial statements. So this says cash and cash equivalents is a good example. Well, in many parts of the world, uh, the word cash denotes currency and so they like to put cash in deposits or something to indicate that it was bank, that it was uh, money that's in the bank. It's not currency sitting around. And that is perfectly okay as long as you make follow the disclosures required by the accounting. The exact wording can be, uh, you can use the wording that makes sense in your region and gives the most clarity to your users in your region. So while the accounting manual is very authoritative, and I have uh, great respect for it, it is not absolutely prescriptive to every word. Okay, so uh, here uh, we will put in the dates. 
So if you want to use December 31st of 2001, many is perfectly okay. Many regions like to have a heading that calls as at December 31st of 2001, as at uh, any place that was in the British Empire, then that would be uh, the same. Okay, same difference. You, you've complied with the spirit of the law and didn't let the and didn't get tied up in the letter of the law. The accounting manual requires for missions and conferences that you you have two different funds and they stipulate the accounting manual says they must be recorded and reported out here as two separate funds. We'll have a separate presentation on why we do fund accounting and where fund accounting fits in, but they have two different funds. I should mention to you while we're talking about funds is that fund accounting will not change the content of your total for your organization. So the total uh, current assets, land building equipment, total assets and liabilities all the way down would be the same whether you were doing fund accounting or not. And so for that reason, you can see that the inter-organizational receivables and payables do not go over to the total column. You see how it works here? Okay, so they're left out. And just to make sure there's clarity, the, the total at the bottom says interfund borrowing is eliminated in the total columns. And so just so you sort of understand how that is working. All right, uh, we, have, we have current assets, land building equipment, non-current assets, liabilities, current liabilities, and other liabilities. Those are required and stipulated by the accounting manual. A classified balance sheet is required. And you can see that we have uh, the bottom section. Uh, in the United States, we would call it the equity section. In places, uh, many, most other places in the world, it would be the capital section. Well, the equity or capital section of the statement of financial position is called net assets. So instead of having capital or equity, we have net assets. With that in mind, with that introduction, I believe we're ready to go on and uh, start talking about cash and cash equivalents. And so we'll, we'll stop the video here and in our next video we'll talk about cash and cash equivalents and investments and accounts receivable and cash held in agency and we'll work right down here but following along uh, with the accounting manual verbiage and the words that, that describe each of these. So thank you for your participation and we'll move on to the next video.